Have you ever seen an x-ray of the lumbar spine that looks like this? October is Spina Bifida Awareness Month, so let's talk about this congenital spinal defect and how it can be prevented. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 19-year-old female who was on Valproate for headaches and got pregnant and didn't receive appropriate prenatal care. She was really overwhelmed and didn't know what to do. She lived in denial during most of her pregnancy and went on to have the baby full term without any complications through a vaginal delivery. She had her baby at her local community hospital and upon delivery, the doctors noticed this on her back and said, something was wrong. This baby has spina bifida, which is a neural tube defect. The neural tube is the spinal cord and it rolls up and folds together and closes in 28 to 32 days after conception. That's four weeks. Most women don't even know they're pregnant at that time. So if you don't know you're pregnant, then how can you prevent this? It's so important for women of childbearing age to be aware of these facts because over 70% of cases of neural tube defects can be prevented with appropriate supplementation of folic acid. The recommended dose is 400 micrograms and that should start weeks before you even try to get pregnant. Not only that, but in our patient's case, she was not warned about her prescription medication, which is Valproate, and that can increase the risk of neural tube defects. It's a medication that's used to treat migraines, bipolar disorder, and epilepsy. There are several different types of neural tube defects, raising for ones that are often not recognized at birth to ones that are very apparent at birth. In her baby's case, the baby's spinal cord was actually exposed and leaking cerebral spinal fluid. In open neural tube defects, these need to be closed within 24 hours of birth. These cases are performed by pediatric neurosurgeons at tertiary care hospitals. This means they need to go to a specialized hospital that can care for these babies. If we knew about this going into her delivery, she could have delivered at a different hospital and not have had to be transferred to that facility, exposing more risk to the baby. Sometimes in babies that we know have a neural tube defect, these can actually be closed in utero, meaning before the baby's even born. These babies often have loss of function in their lower extremities, as well as their bowel and bladder. This means they're paralyzed and need Foley catheterization and bowel assistance for the rest of their life. But the good news is they can go on to living happy, fulfilling lives. Other associated neurological conditions that we have to look for is hydrocephalus or where fluid backs up on the brain and that may require shunting. In addition to that, these babies can also have what's called a Chiari type 2 malformation that I discussed a few weeks back. These babies can also have other associated orthopedic problems such as scoliosis, club feet, muscle contractions, and other hip and joint problems. Not all cases of neural tube defects are this obvious because 10 to 20% of the population has spina bifida occulta. And the signs of this are often a small hairy patch on the lower back. Before you get scared because you have a hairy patch on your lower back, most of these people don't have any symptoms and have nothing to worry about. Now back to our case, our patient delivered at a local community hospital, so her baby had to be transferred to a children's hospital for surgical correction of her neural tube defect. She underwent a successful closure by the pediatric neurosurgeon and went on to be screened for other congenital defects associated with this, and this was found to be her only problem. This baby has done well, but she does have some weakness in her lower extremities, as well as bowel and bladder incontinence. This mom has went on to have several other children since this pregnancy and has stopped her Depakote and took appropriate supplementation of folic acid and has had three additional healthy babies. Now, the one thing that I do want to recognize is that not all of these cases are associated with a lack of prenatal care or a lack of supplementation of folic acid. Any of these cases are just spontaneous. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.